Hi guys, Gabi from Your Path Hacks here. Today's video is about the new features added in Orchestrator in 2020. Did you know that you can now run multiple bots on the same machine in parallel? Or that you could now edit queue items directly in Orchestrator? Stick around and you'll find out the new main functionalities of Your Path Cloud Orchestrator in 2020. Folders in Orchestrator allow for fine-grained control over different Orchestrator resources of a tenant. Think about it as of further divisions of a tenant. These resources could be users, roles, machines, packages or libraries. And there are two types of folders, the modern and the classic one. The classic folders function the same as the organizational units in earlier versions. And it's okay if that doesn't tell you much. The main idea is that the administration of the automations is managed by a central admin and robots and environments are assigned to each folder. A robot can be only part of one folder and a folder called default is created for each tenant. In modern folders, the administration of the automations is delegated to the department of a company for example, finance or purchasing and so on, or any other way of division of the automations. And users are assigned directly to the folders. The user and the automatically provisioned robot are linked and the process can be run on any robot from any folder where the users has access on. Modern folders also support a hierarchical structure where you can have up to six subfolders under each first level folder as opposed to classic folders where each is a separate flat structure. If you want to activate modern folders, you can follow the instructions at the following page. AI Fabric is a service that allows you to deploy, manage and continuously improve machine learning models and consume them within RPA workflows in Studio. A list of pre-built packages is provided by the UiPath engineers on the open source data science community but of course, you can build your own machine learning packages for your own particular needs. ML models are developed into ML packages and then they are made available in Orchestrator as ML skills in a similar way to how packages are assigned to processes. Here is a list of pre-built packages. The main work is done in the area of NLP, Natural Language Processing, and some of these, like text sentiment analysis, language identification or translations, are already made available to everybody through the Path Cognitive Activities package. I have already made a video on this. I will link it um, on the screen or in the comment section below. One thing to mention is that AI Fabric is, uh, however, only available to enterprise users and is licensed as a separate service for automation cloud organizations. Process display name. This is a very small but convenient change. This allows users to conveniently change the display name of a process and avoids having to republish a package and recreate the process just because of a typo. So this is quite handy. We can go into our process list, uh, select our process, go to process settings, and we can change the display name directly here in the settings update and we will have then the new name assigned to the process. Action Center. This is the new tasks menu that um, has received a major overhaul. Actions are tasks to be performed by users when dealing with long running workflows, when user intervention is required before proceeding to the next step in the workflow. This could be if the user should validate some data or correct it before continuing the process. In Orchestrator, this is marked by having the job suspended, waiting for requirements to be met, and then having the job resumed and executed as usual. Uh, the really great thing about this is that during the time the action is pending completion, no robot is held hostage. It means they can be used to execute different processes just like that. 
And upon completion of the document validation action, the initial workflow is resumed on whatever robot is available. Uh, just to mention that in order to have this behavior, special actions have to be built in in the studio process. So it not, it's not just happening by default. Um, and for this, the UiPath Persistence Activities package offers activities for creating tasks of validation, waiting and resuming the workflow. The next improvement is called Headless Process. It's got a funny name. Uh, UiPath is no longer restricting you to executing background processes using distinct users. And yes, you heard it right, you can now execute as many such processes on the same user at the same time. Just make the job unattended and you can run different instances in the same time. There is one uh, restriction or distinction to be made though. The same user can execute multiple background processes and the singular UI requiring process at the same time to avoid conflicts. There is improvement with job priority as well. If multiple jobs need to be run around the same time and we cannot estimate their exact completion time to schedule them with exactity, we can now use priorities to make sure the really important ones are run sooner rather than later. A job can have one of the standard priorities, low, normal or high. So if you have some high priority jobs waiting in a queue together with some medium, or normal or low priority jobs, they will be processed first. Another nice new feature is storage buckets. Um, and storage buckets are used to provide storage solutions for automation projects. For example, a common file that needs to be accessible to more business processes. Uh, think of them as blob assets. So assets which can um, hold more formats than just string, boolean and integer. And permissions are defined per folder. Uh, it's rather simple, but could come in very handy. One restriction, one, one new restriction is that as of March, the size of the queue items is restricted to one megabyte. They support anyways only text of maximum 4,000 characters each. So it would be a bit hard to exceed this size uh, in most cases. But anyway, this is something to be aware of. If you need to upload larger items, store the data in external storage and only reference the link within the item. And for that, you can see the storage buckets just mentioned before. A new feature is the package and workflow compare. So the package explorer has the new nice functionality to compare different versions of the same package. So we can go to packages. We can uh, select one of the packages. I would go to explore package. And I can now select, for example, two versions of the same package and view them alongside for a better comparison. And to do that, it says here I have to uh, select the XML file for a package. I want to compare, so I will select the main here. I will then go on compare. I would select the second version together with mine. I will click on compare and then I will click on compare XML and I have alongside the two versions and I very quickly can see what is the difference. So in the second one, I have some additional log messages which are not present in the first package. So a nice feature to compare quickly some previous versions of your automation in case um, it's an old automation, you don't remember exactly what has changed, you didn't document that properly maybe at the time, uh, and you can fairly quickly spot the differences with this um, compare uh, workflow structure. And we have now a convenient button to start jobs immediately on the process page. So if I go to processes, I have now this button to start a job. I can just click it. I don't have to go on triggers anymore. Uh, add a trigger, schedule a process to run in the next minute or so. I can just go to jobs. I will click on start. I will select my process. Um, my robots if needed, and then I can just uh, 
assign a priority if I need to, and then start it. And probably one of the most powerful new orchestrator features, although it's not very user friendly, is editing a queue item. So um, we are now able to edit a queue item directly from orchestrator. Well, not exactly directly, as we cannot edit its field values directly on the, in the orchestrator web screen, but we can download the contents of the queue item as JSON, modify it online, and then re-upload it as JSON back. It's not really a functionality we could pass over to our users to fix bad data. For that, either an unattended bot with actions or a separate interface would be recommended. But nevertheless, it comes in handy when we would like to do some testing and debugging and manually alter the queue item data. So let's demo that. We have a queue called test queue. Um, we can add a new item to it uh, by running a simple uh, add queue item uh, job. Um, let's see if we have any items created already. We have one new transaction. So we have here um, two fields, ID, one, two, three, four, five, and name, test name one. So we have one item. Um, we could try to uh, edit this value directly. So I'll go on the item. I would say edit. I have here the ID and the name. I can say download as JSON. This would save a JSON file on my desktop. I can then edit this with um, Notepad, for example. I can alter this, so I will put a 6 at the end and I will change the name to test name 2. I would save it. Let me copy this to the desktop. And then I would upload, upload back the JSON and override. So here it is. I will save. And now if we check our queue item, we have here the six and we have the two at the end of the name. So that's it. That's how we can um, alter or change uh, queue items and, uh, and queue item data. It's quite useful for debugging. Uh, it could be quite, quite handy to uh, use in some processes. So this wraps up the main features added to Orchestrator in the first half of 2020. I hope you were able to pick up something new that you would use while working with Orchestrator. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Hey guys, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks.